Hello everybody, I am Nico D. I I am here at Fosden, an open source fair in Brussels. I'm going to show you some stands and I'm going to show you around over here. So here we go! So Fosdem is a free and open source software developers European meeting and it was in the Open University in Brussels. It was on February the 2nd and 3rd. So this was a free event. There were hundreds of speakers from the open source world and there were many stands. This was all spread out over six buildings on the university campus and in total there were 728 speakers in 34 different rooms. So it was impossible to see it all, but I did see a few great things. So these are the stands in the K building. Many famous companies are here like OpenSUSE projects, LibreOffice, GNOME, KD, Mozilla, Debian, but it was always very packed over here. For our server, the SUSE server is giving you answers to your, to your questions. We have an Android app, an iOS app, we have a web application, but this is, uh, as a smart speaker, we want to make it possible to play music. It's, it's using YouTube uh, as a data source for music and if you say play something, it will play. Not right now because I'm use the <laughs> just fixing something. But what is this? It's a pocket science lab. It's kind of a everything you can find in the physics lab. Yeah, not following the approach of all other So it's like an Arduino. No, it has all these different features. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh cool. So this is the pocket science lab. So this has got many functions. So it is a four channel oscilloscope, it's a voltmeter, it's a logic analyzer, it's a sine wave generator, it can generate power with modulation, it can measure capacitance, it has I2C, SPI, UART data buses. So no, this is nothing like an Arduino. So this is more like a voltmeter with an oscilloscope, with a bench power supply and an Arduino all together. So this is really something impressive. It was a 19th edition of FOSDEM. Last year there were about 8000 people here. I think it's about the same. Everything here is done by volunteers. So thank you to all of them. Is that an operating system or is it just uh, software? Plus my mobile is a desktop environment. And yeah. specifically a desktop, uh, uh, plus my general is the KDE desktop environment. And yeah. my mobile is one that is uh, specialized for embedded systems and uh, mobile systems like phones. And uh, do, on which phones does it work? Uh, right now, right now we have here the uh, Nexus 7. Yeah, which so then, Android phones? Well, not really, because it doesn't actually run Android. It actually yeah, runs yeah, a proper yeah. Linux. Yeah. Uh, or uh, but I don't uh, like, like if you get it from the store, it runs, it runs Android, but uh, yeah. we put a proper Linux on it and then we put a plasma mobile desktop environment on it. So I don't think it's, it will run on an iPhone, for example. No, it won't run on an iPhone. Yeah. Can I get that running on an Android, a normal Android? Uh, that really depends. Uh, I'm uh, unfortunately not very good at plasma mobile. Whether <laughs> Do you know what CPU this is? Sorry, what? It, do you know which CPU it is? It's an ARM, but uh, it doesn't... Yeah, I'm not sure about the model. Um, maybe someone knows. You know exactly what model this is like. I mean, I don't know more than it says. Yeah, me neither. Oh, it's an RK3399, but it's, it's different. The second, the second paragraph. Oh. This is not RISC-5. No, no. That is RISC-5. Uh, oh! Uh, this is the CPU board. This is just an adapter board. So oh, be able to cool! The, uh, wow! If, 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 oh. That's great! 
everybody. I am here at the stand of Plasma. It's an operating system for smartphones, so it doesn't depend on Android or anything else. Uh, it doesn't work on all mobile phones or on all smartphones, but uh, it works on many, as you can see here. Sorry. But they also have got something very special. So they have got a RISC-5 uh, processor here that's running Plasma. So as you can see here, it's on a small board that's uh, fixed onto the main board. Main board has got an ARM CPU, but it's just to be able to run the RISC-5 processor. So uh, as you can see, it already works. So this is the future. This is where we're going to. So now we've seen a RISC-V processor working. So I've been to different talks about RISC-V. The first one was about how to securely access memory with RISC-V. It was all very complicated for me. I once was a programmer, so I know how important this is. But my knowledge about the RISC-V architecture is way too limited. Here's some images of that. Solution. So, what's the task group? So it's, uh, each task group has a, we have a working uh, space. And uh, this is one of the largest task groups right now on the foundation. Uh, and uh, initially there were two groups. The, it was the, the, both the cryptographic extensions and the trust execution environment. They went the same group and it was the largest group. So they split it. And uh, because security seems to be a big thing. I mean, a lot of people participate in these uh, working groups. And uh, we have like a 112 registered members, which is a lot of people. Uh, we work usually by uh, call, conference calls, like uh, once or twice, like two, twice a month, or maybe more frequently. And we also have a mailing list. Um, so the mission of this working group is to define an architecture specification for trusted execution environment or risk five processors. Let's start with that. So you know, uh, ARM has Trust Zone, Intel has SGX. We want something similar for RISC V, and uh, we want not only to, to uh, provide a, a mechanism for trusted execution environments uh, to be initialized, but to discuss uh, other aspects of uh, uh, how to protect uh, a, a flow, an execution flow. Um, After that, there was a talk on using SAIL to generate the GNU assembler and disassembler and simulator for RISC V. This was cool to see how they are implementing GNU in the RISC V architecture. And after that, there was a talk about implementing build roots for RISC-V. This is very important, so Linux distros and software can be compiled for the RISC-V processor. What I have learned from these RISC-V talks is that there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, certainly for the 64-bit architecture. So it won't be tomorrow that we will have a smartphone or an SBC with a RISC-V processor, but work is being done and maybe in a few years we all have a RISC-V processor in our pockets. So there were a lot more talks, I've watched a few about microcontrollers, about Python, MicroPython, about uh, making games. You can watch it all on the Fosdom website. I hope you will like my video, thank you all for watching, please subscribe to my channel, see you later, bye!